Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing a stage 3 fuel pump upgrade on my E90 335i BMW. Okay, so let's go over the hardware needed to do this. I have a hob switch or pressure activated switch that I'm going to install in my aftermarket charge pipe. It goes where you install your meth injection bung normally. And this is rated for 15 PSI normally open. So basically when, it, when 15 PSI is sensed by this, it will close these contacts. I have an extra fuel pump lying around uh, just to be able to modify things. We have an install kit for a Walbro 450 fuel pump. I have a 90 degree elbow to go off the top of the fuel pump. I have a little adapter here. I'll show you what that's for. We have the fuel pump itself. We have a Y adapter and we have a relay harness. Comes with this 30 amp fuse right here and a 30 amp relay. So just to help you visualize, we're going to have two pumps feeding into this adapter here. So only one pump is going to be running all the time and the other pump is going to be triggered at high boost. Now these switches are adjustable, but they come out of the box at 15 PSI. And that's where I want to be anyway. So I was just setting this hat up with a wiring harness to plug into my Walbro fuel pump so that you can pass power through the top hat. Next thing I'm gonna tackle is installing the hob switch on my charge pipe. So here's my charge pipe, taking out the meth bung. I'm gonna make a small little line to go from here to ground because we're intercepting ground with this switch. Okay, so we're tapped into the ground terminal block for the hob switch. This is the path to ground to signal the fuel pump now. We have to run a wire all the way up to the front of the car from the back of the car with the harness that came with it. So I'm gonna work on that next to get this through the firewall. This is an NPT tapered thread, so you don't have to go crazy tight. You don't have to bottom it out. It's, it will tighten itself up along the way. Now we're just gonna focus on getting a wire through the firewall from here, which is gonna go to the back of the car. Okay, so I just poked a hole in the grommet that goes between the firewall and pass that wire through. And now I'm going to go connect it up to the hob switch. Okay, so now that the hob switch is run, I'm going to go into the back seat, lift up on the seat base so we can get access to the fuel pump. So here's the switch ground from the front of the car that's run up that hob switch that's only active at 15 PSI. So this will ground the relay to allow the circuit to complete. So that's our positive wire. It's gonna feed the fuel pump from the relay, passing through. See, so there'll be enough room to bolt this down and be able to move this hat back and forth out of the way. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm setting up a ground wire right all the way to back to the battery just for a nice solid ground. So this is the switched uh, signal wire for the relay. I'm gonna pull that back through into the trunk compartment area and find a place to tap in over there that's only active when the ignition's on. So I'm pretty much finished up with the electrical side over here. It's just gonna be the fuel pump installation. So I'm gonna to move to the trunk area now. Here's my relay. And I just have the wiring going from in here down along this side piece here through the back seat. You can't even see any of it. Once you put that cover on, you wouldn't be able to tell. So focusing on the ground for now.
Here's my 30 amp relay mounted. We have the 30 amp fuse. We have power running to it. So that's all safely done. Last thing that needs to be done is just triggering with a power source that's only active when the ignition's on. So I'm gonna look for one of those now and we'll finish up with the wiring. So that harness that I pulled out there is for the exhaust flapper. It opens up your exhaust valve and your muffler. And uh, that is a good 12 volt source for switched ignition. So I'm gonna run my yellow wire over to this. All right, so that's the wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the battery and we'll do a couple tests. So what I wanna do is Go ahead and short the hob switch with the ignition off and see if that relay clicks, it's not supposed to. And then turn the ignition on and see if you get a click only when the ignition's on. So that's a success. It's working as it should. When I have the ignition off and touch the hob switch together, it doesn't do anything. And with the ignition on and touching the hob switch together, it clicks. All I was doing was taking a screwdriver and just touching those two terminals together. All right, so just minor adjustment on the fuse placement. And with the electrical. All right, let's move on to removing the fuel basket. I rented this lock ring removal tool for my local auto parts store. So I've already done a stage two fuel pump conversion with this. And this is a Walbro 450. I'm just gonna be adding a second one. I'll put a link in the description for the video where I converted my standard bucket to a stage two. And uh, just so you know, cause it doesn't look conventional, but it'll be a similar process even if yours is completely stock. But you should check out the video in the description where I'm converting this. It'll show you all the modifications I made. So just remove the uh, level sender. I'm going to modify this piece slightly for clearance. So my old main pump is now my secondary pump just because why not use the fresh one? This is only gonna be leveraged when we're over 15 PSI. And I just tuck the sock up into the cavity just to ensure that uh, it doesn't get caught up on the float. And this is my primary being fed from over here. And it's angled down and it'll get right to the bottom of the tank. So it's easier to install this without the top hat we're not gonna need this piece. It's not really serving any function. The only thing it really did was cable manage the float wiring. But I just tucked that down into there since we have this new space. So I'm gonna install this back on the car now. Okay, so for clearance purposes, I have to do this a little bit differently because we can't clear the top of the tank uh, with what I had shown up to this point. So in my install kit for the Walbro pump, it did come with this 
flexible corrugated nylon hose. So I'm going to use that to kind of space things out and also give a more gradual bend. So I've had this in my car for a while now. This is my stage two original pump right here. And this is the hose that came with my Walbro pump. I've had it in for over a year, I think maybe 10,000 miles or so. And this is the hose that they include with it. And it held up, but I'm worried about kinking it too much. That's why I'm gonna switch this out right now. I got a better version of this. This is ethanol resistant, but also can bend quite a bit and won't really kink. So I'm gonna to transition to this, make it a similar length overall, so we can really have flexibility on, on this piece here. Now it's a little tricky getting this nylon hose over. I was able to insert it on here and I'm gonna use a clamp on top of that. So this comes with the install kit when you buy a Walbro fuel pump, but this slides over, I'm gonna put a clamp around there. Over here with some pressure, I'll be able to get it on. I'm going to use some heat to coax it along, but you don't wanna to use too much heat. All right, so obviously you saw me use a lighter around here, which probably seems ridiculous, but uh, this has been sitting for a day. It's completely evaporated, but take great care. Now, if I was doing this again, I'd probably just, since I'm gonna be tucking these down on the side, I'd probably just get AN fittings with a, a barb adapters for hoses that are straight instead of curved down. This will still kind of tuck it down toward the bottom of the tank and the line can click on. I'll link in the description some straight ones as well because those should work just the same. I'll show you when I'm in the car. But, you know, at least 100% this will work, but you could probably keep that straight. Just keep that in mind. And there's enough slack here that uh, it'll work fine. So it'll be like that. So these 90s could be pretty helpful and convenient for that line to snap into. I'm just putting it out there that you may want to go straight. We'll see once we're in the car. So I'm going to leave this off until we're in the car because it will just get in the way. Support wise, there's not a whole lot going on. As you can see, they're fine in there. They're going to live inside this bucket, no problem. Okay, so now I got these gloves that are chemical resistant. Make sure you get a set of gloves when you're doing this that say they're ethanol. In my stage two video, I'm sticking my hand in fuel, which is not a good idea, honestly, but now I'm running E60 in the tank almost, and it's really nasty. Don't let that get on your hands, it'll dry them out really bad. So get some chemical resistant gloves that are rated for ethanol while you're doing this work. Another thing to keep in mind, you may just want to get a second one of these corrugated lines instead of dealing with this hose. Just get two of those, it gives you a little bit more flex versus this one's a bit stiffer, but it should be fine. I clocked this the other way so we can get clearance. But I have the microphone down there now. I'm gonna put the key in the on position, see if we get a prime out of the main pump, you'll be able to hear it. And then I'm gonna short the hob switch up at the front and see if we get pulses.
I heard that prime. Now I'm gonna go for the hop switch. Now you can hear the secondary pump running. Only when I short the hob switch. And now it's off. So I'm gonna put everything back together and we'll go for a drive. It's definitely working. Back seat's all back together now. I'm gonna give it a start. First start. It should be probably pretty good considering I tested it with that secondary pump. So I'm back from my test drive. I had E47 in the car. Now I have E58. I filled it up. I had three quarter tank. Now I have a full tank. As you can see, this is a spool ethanol analyzer. We'll talk more about them in a second. So you guys should be able to make that out. So this is going through a run. You can see my fuel pressure stays way high and like lowest it ever goes is 64, even with E60 in there. That's a big improvement. And then on the high side, as you see all the way along, you're talking close to 3000 PSI because I have the spool overdrive, helix overdrive four times. So my low side uh, is definitely doing well, lots of PSI. If you guys have been following along, I've been chasing a misfire as well. And uh, that's why I wanted to put more ethanol in there. Assuming it's a bad tune, I wanted to stuff as much ethanol in the car as possible. Get it up to like E75, E80, even let's see what happens. My, I should be able to maintain over 50 PSI and just see how's it hold up. Does that help anything or not? Or am I getting truly false knock? Because in that last run there, I, I went out with E47. First time I punched it, it, it instantly misfired. I filled it up and got it up to E58 and then uh, it took a lot of back-to-back -back pulls beating on it. And I actually got to about 6,600 RPM or so before it actually uh, threw a code. So that's an improvement. I'm gonna try to push it up to E70 next, uh, see how my pressures hold up. So you, you could piece together what I did in this video for about 350 to $400. And if you don't mind messing around, great. If you want something ready to go off the shelf, you can spend $4.99. Spool is actually gonna provide me with this kit, but there was an availability issue and I figured, hey, you know what? My channel is a DIY channel. It's a vehicular DIY. I'll show you guys how to build something like this, but there's gonna be some of you guys that don't wanna mess around like I did and just get something that drops in. I'm already running their ethanol sensor and I'm running their uh, Helix Overdrive. So Spool is a good company local to me in Houston. They'll hook you up with a stage three pump if you want. I'll put a link in the description. If you want to piece it together and save yourself about 100 to 150 bucks, then of course I'll put links for everything I did in the video. Now you'll also have to check the description for my stage two fuel pump conversion because that showed you how to uh, cut up that bucket and whatnot. The fuel pump basket looks like this stock and the way I cut it, there's a bit of a support. So as you press this right against the base of the tank and it gets pressurized by that spring, you're not pressing on the socks and whatnot. I, was, I figured that would be a good thing. We are ready to conclude this video showing you how to convert your fuel pump to stage three on your N54 powered E90 or E92 BMW. If this is the first video you're catching of mine, consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.